What does Kobe Bryant, Marshall Mathers, Bruce Wayne, Peter Parker all have in common? They've all got alter egos. And I'll wear these helmets in workouts to help people like you tap into your fitness alter ego. And so in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how I've used an alter ego to help me run a sub three hour marathon, how Travis has dropped over 60 pounds in less than a year, tapping into his alter ego. And so I'm gonna head up to my computer and walk you through this step-by-step -step on how to create your alter ego, how to use it for fitness to ultimately change your life. All right, so here we go. Let's dive into this, how an alter ego, specifically a fitness alter ego, can change your life. And you're gonna see examples from entertainment, sports, your favorite movies, your favorite characters, examples of how I've done it, examples how clients have done it. Um, and this is something that I'm just super passionate about. It's something I've built this entire channel around and really want to address initially like why you are stuck because so many people talk in platitudes or they just talk in high level concepts. They say, oh, well, your habits aren't sticking. It's not a lifestyle. You got to make it a lifestyle. Well, then you're thinking, all right, well, how do I make it a lifestyle? Like, that, that's not tactical. That's not tangible. And then you'll say, oh, well, I got to shift my identity. You're here. I got to shift my identity. Like that sounds like a lot of work. And so then you're wondering, how do I shift my identity? This is the best way I have found to do it. And it is something that is very specific and step-by-step -step and something concrete that you can grasp. So what we're going to cover is what an alter ego is. Examples of it, in case you're a little bit skeptical, which I totally get, then we're going to go into the science behind it, books, uh, different ways that it's applied from a mental health standpoint, and then really how gamifies or how an alter ego gamifies fitness and why gamification is the future. I got a really cool article from fast company from 2024 and then we'll break down the steps like the specific here's how you go about doing it and this is something that i learned working with a mental performance coach playing at washington state university and so it takes a lot of those concepts from the book the alter ego effect from working with the coach and also just doing this with hundreds of people and then ultimately we'll we'll go into how this shifts your habits and how you can start to shift them and so if you are skeptical i will have you know that you are not the only person creating alter ego. Eminem is Marshall Mathers' alter ego. I got a video that I'll show you in about you know 20 seconds on how this breaks down. Kobe Bryant had the Black Mamba. When he went on the court, he wasn't Kobe Bryant. He was the Black Mamba. Bruce Wayne had Batman. Peter Parker had Spider-Man. Peter Parker couldn't defeat the Green Goblin, but Spider-Man could. But first, let's break down this quick little video. One is that you created this alter ego, Goggins. Mm -hmm which I think is insanely powerful. And it reminds me of Eminem talked about the same thing with creating Slim Shady was it was the way he, once he had the persona, he could face his fears and he could get up. Uh, how do those two things, the, the creation of the alter ego and that listening to the, the sort of dark, hateful things that you're probably saying to yourself, how do those work together? And you have to first be uncomfortable with how you feel about yourself. With that voice that a lot of us like to run away from, we all have it. We all have that voice to say, hey, man, you know, you're you're kind of wimping out right now. You're kind of being a little punk right now. But a lot of us say, OK, that's OK. It's OK to tell these little white lies to ourselves. So we first have to face the real you. The real me is David Goggins. The real me is a guy looking at you right now saying, I don't want to fucking be on this show right now because I used to stutter as a kid. So a couple of really cool things in breaking apart this. Goggins is talking about almost the dark side version of himself and Carl Jung in his uh, approaches to the identity. We'll talk about the shadow self. And in Star Wars, you have the dark side. So there is that dark side version of yourself, the self, the side of you that is afraid, the side of you that is ashamed, the side of you that doesn't want to, that has performance anxiety, that doesn't want to go to the gym. But then there's another version of you inside here that is able to do that. And that's where you tap into your alter ego. So another way to think about this for you Star Wars fans out there is that you tapping into your alter ego is really you unlocking the hero inside of you. Luke had the moisture farmer version of him who was afraid to take on the Empire. And then there was Luke the Jedi Knight who's in the throne room fighting Darth Vader and resisting the temptation of the dark side when Palpatine's like, join me. And he's like, no, I'm a Jedi like my father before me. And so it's really the hero inside of you capable of defeating the challenges. Something as simple as sleeping in when you need to go and work out, saying no to the cookie when you want to have something that's a little bit healthier. And I'm going to show you how we do this. And to really hammer this home, I want to give you a few more applicable ways to think about this. Let's say you're a parent, and when you're at work, you're in dad mode. You're presenting, you're talking to your boss in a specific language, you're going through reports, you're all buttoned up. And then when you go home and you cross that door, all of a sudden you're doing cowboys and Indians, you're running around with your kids, talking in different voices, because they're five and seven years old. 
you're the same person. There's just different parts of your identity. Then in the therapy and counselor space, and I really like to think about that as mental performance coaches or the mind mechanic that's helping you get your mind sharp. There's a technique called DBT, dialect behavior therapy. And really what it helps do is change behavioral patterns so that you go from the reasonable versus emotional, emotional minds and ultimately make a shift to a more wise way of thinking of things. And this whole entire concept is something that I came across when I was reading The Alter Ego Effect by Todd Herman. The Alter Ego Effect, The Power of Secret Identities to Transform Your Life is a book that honestly changed my life when I was going through a really hard time. And I was having a hard time being the man that I knew that I was capable of being. And so I want to get now into how an alter ego really gamifies fitness, because we've all played video games to some degree. And in that video game, you are playing a character and you are choosing that character traits a lot of times, especially in RPG games. So right here, I got Skyrim, one of the all time greats from a gaming standpoint. And when you choose your character, you're choosing the height, you're choosing their facial structure, you're choosing their hair, what kind of special abilities do they have? What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? You're going in and personally handcrafting what character traits and what values and what beliefs this character has. And so in that gamification process, you are basically choosing an avatar and saying, this is what I want to be. This is the kind of person that I want to be in this universe. And it's not real, but you can transfer a lot of those same concepts into the gamification of fitness. This article from Fast Company, uh, and let me get to the, the right view of this, and how gamification is changing fitness is from February 2024. And I love this little line here where it says, gamification represents an engaging, challenging, and above all, a lasting journey towards an active and healthy lifestyle. Technology is a powerful tool and it's increasing an integration into our life and daily daily lives brings new opportunity to monitor, monitor and improve physical and mental fitness in innovative ways. So think about your favorite video game. It probably has a lot of elements that get you hooked, that keep you addicted, that keep you coming back. And so when you gamify your fitness, you create this avatar for yourself that you're playing, this alter ego that you're tapping into. And you say, okay, what kind of character traits do I want? What are the little challenges that I'm going to do each day, each week, each month, each year that ladder up into me getting to level 50? But level 50 takes time. If you played Call of Duty, it doesn't just happen overnight. But every single time you log in and every single time you play, you're leveling up your scope. You're leveling up your gun. That levels up your skins. That levels up, you know, you run a thousand meters. You get some sort of level up in XP. And so being able to do this from a fitness side of things, really helps make it feel like you are working towards an achievement as opposed to sacrificing and losing things in order to lose weight or pursue a fitness goal. And this is something that I'm just super passionate about. And you see me on this channel working out in helmets, whether that's Boba Fett or 501st Trooper. And as a former Division One catcher, I just always identified with, man, as soon as I put this helmet on, I'm in just, you know, workhorse mode. Like I'm a different person as soon as I put on that helmet and I'll get to how physical items can really help uh, trigger this alter ego effect. But the idea of having a helmet on or having something physical that as soon as you connect with it, boom, you turn into Spider-Man or you turn into Iron Man or you turn into Thor. Thor without his hammer, you know, he's just a big, strong dude, but he gets his hammer, man. Now he's a different person. So that's really something that I've identified with and really connected with and building this channel and working with hundreds of people all over the world. And I'll just give you a few examples here. Ben over in the UK, and I got to make sure this is the right view. Uh, he had this really cool story about tapping into his alter ego. It was pissing down outside. I always walk to the gym, every reason to not go, but for some reason, the alter ego kicked in. I hardly think Captain Keeley would not go into battle because he didn't feel like it. I can't let him down. I can't let my squad down. I can't let my academy down. So I said, F it and popped on my 327th Fit for the Republic shirt and went to the gym. Now, that might sound like a really small thing, but man, it's those micro battles that you fight every single day that build the character of who you are. Travis, one of my favorite people I've ever worked with, he's down over 60 pounds in seven, eight months, and he taps into his record every single time he works out. He is CT 1016 of Bravo Squad, and it's worked in a way that nothing else has ever worked for him. And what I find a lot of times is that if you're someone who really identifies with gamification or superheroes, that might be a way in which you need to learn the same way someone might be a kinesthetic learner, someone might be an, a visual learner, an auditory learner. 
You got to find the thing that works for you. And that might be an alter ego. Akash overcame his performance anxiety. He said, so I've never really enjoyed working out in a gym setting, feelings of inadequacy, performance anxiety, which is something that I've really struggled with um, over the course of my life. That was a whole nother story that we can get into. But yesterday I decided to recon the gym in my neighborhood. I thought to myself, how would a clone commando approach and overcome this anxiety? Once he got to the gym, knocked out one of the workouts, it felt great not caring what other people thought there. You might be thinking, okay, cool, like... People actually use this. This isn't just some crazy person on the internet telling me to tap into my alter ego and use it from a fitness standpoint to lose weight, to you know pursue performance goals. And so what I want to talk about now is actually the steps to developing your, your alter ego. And so we got to start with defining characteristics. Then we're going to go into the visual representation, how you actually see this. What would X do is a really powerful question you can ask yourself. You choose your activation method and then you create and give it a name. So characteristics, first thing you got to ask yourself is what characteristics, what character traits do I need? Uh, you might need from a fitness standpoint, courage to say no to your coworkers when they offer you a donut. A lot of people really struggle with offending others or others looking at them with a sideways head. It's Friday. We always have donuts. It might take courage for you to say no. And it might be you saying no to coworkers or friends or anyone offering you food that's not in line with your goals to make that change. Confidence, to walk into the gym for your first time, to walk in even to a new gym. I've been working out for 15 years. Going into a new gym, there's a little bit of anxiety. Where's the equipment? Who's the big dogs here? Am I going to you know, be able to just get my workout in without being bothered? There's a lot of unknown. So you might create that confidence. Charisma, to introduce yourself to someone new. So many people work out so that they can be more confident in social situations, right? I'll get into uh, how I do that in a second. Determination to not give up when you hit an obstacle. Who is a character that displays those traits that you can tap into when you want to give up? Discipline to eat healthy even when you don't want to. That's probably one of the most important ones. If you are struggling and you are stuck, there's probably a discipline character trait that you need to develop, and it's a skill. It's something that you can develop. It's not something that you're born with. It's something that you can grow, and you just got to be able to continue to exert and build XP in it. So who or what characters have these? Well, um, I'll give you my example and how I have a visual representation of this. Captain Rex has leadership. Think of any military um, person, either real life or in movies, and that's going to be someone who is able to galvanize the troops and lead from the front. Maximus, my favorite movie is Gladiator. So Maximus Decimus Meridius, he has integrity. The I forget the gal's name, but she basically is like, hey, sleep with me. And he's like, no, I want to go home to my family. And he's just a man who doesn't want the power. He doesn't want to take over Rome. He just wants to go back to his farm and be with his family. Tom Hiddleston, that guy's got charisma. Every single time I watch him in a show as Loki or in a movie, I'm like, man, this guy just emanates charisma. So anytime I'm at a wedding, I'm like, man, how would Tom Hiddleston dance? And then next thing you know, I'm cutting a rug. Mr. Beast, that guy has got massive discipline. Anytime I need to film a YouTube video and I don't want to, and I'm sitting on the couch, I say, what would Mr. Beast do? Next thing you know, I'm doing what I need to do to get that video done. My father has patience. I think this is a really powerful one. And I want to go on a little bit of a tangent here. A lot of people pick up the habits that they have from their family. And a lot of people say, oh, you know, I don't have good genes. That's why I'm overweight. And genetics definitely play a role, but habits play a bigger role. And a lot of time habits are passed down from your grandparents to your parents and then to you. So if your parents, your grandparents struggle with their weight, you probably do too because you ate in their household for 18 years before you got out on your own. And that is ingrained into your identity. It's ingrained into your habits. It's ingrained into your beliefs. And so for a lot of people, they didn't have a visual representation of what healthy looked like, of what fitness looked like. And so you can still love your parents, obviously, but you might need to look to someone else to give you a good visual representation of how you should act if you want to become someone who is healthy, who is fit. And so for me, like my father is someone who at any time I think about, you know, getting worked up or, you know, stressed out. I'm just like, man, my dad was so calm and patient. Like, how can I be more like him? That's a really powerful way and lens to look at this through. Uh, and then one time I was, I was training for a marathon back in 2020. I wanted to become a sub three hour marathon runner. I uh, felt like I could do it. And so anytime I was sitting on the couch and didn't want to get a seven mile run and I would just ask myself, what would a sub three hour marathon runner do? And that question right there got me up off the couch. I got my run in 
And on April 9th, I ran a 257 marathon and it was very much tapping into that alter ego. And this is a great segue. You got to choose your arena. And so what that means is you got to ask yourself, what would the person, the alter ego, the version of myself that I want to become do? So what would Captain Rex do if he didn't want to work out? He would do it anyway. He's got to lead the troops from the front. What would Mr. Beast do if he didn't want to write a script? He would write the script anyway. And I already used this example, but what would a sub three hour marathoner do if he was tired? He'd go and run anyway. It doesn't matter. You just got to ask yourself and create this binary choice for yourself. So next, you got your activation method. And so when I showed you the helmets earlier up in my gym, those are my activation methods. When I put on a Boba Fett helmet, all of a sudden, I'm the most badass bounty hunter in the galaxy, and no one is stopping me. When I want to give up in that sixth set of goblet squats and my legs are on fire, Boba Fett wouldn't give up, so neither will I. So what can you put on or touch that brings you into that state? Is it a helmet? Is it a bracelet? a workout watch, a picture frame. These are all little tiny things that can be deeply linked with your emotions and with your memories. And as soon as you touch that, that now gets you back into the state that you need to be. It's something that we used a lot at Washington State with our mental performance coach. We had a little point uh, in the stadium that we would look at. So maybe we swing at a ball in the dirt or we make an error. We would look at that point. It would bring us back to center, bring us back to focus. And a really popular one of this that was huge in the 90s is the WWJD bracelets. People would throw that on. What would Jesus do? Like that's a very tangible way of looking at this. You want to be more Christ-like. This isn't to, to be religious. This is just a movement that was created based on the concept of this uh, identity shift that you were trying to make. And so you can have so many different variations of that. But as soon as you identify what that little item is, right? It could be a coffee mug. As soon as I fill my coffee mug, man, I'm in work mode now. I'm not just me. I'm the alter ego version of me. And, and we'll get into creating names for that in a second. But I want to address one specific obstacle that a lot of people have when thinking about this. They think that you are being someone outside of yourself. It's a concern that, oh, well, I'm just being fake. I'm not being authentic. And so they'll look at the alter ego, something outside of themselves. This is almost like planets. This is earth. This is the moon. And I would look at it as your identity is much more of series or a number of different alter egos. Like I said, you can go into dad mode, you can go into work mode, you're someone different with your friends than you might be with um, someone on the side of the road who's helping you fix your car Like you just have different identities that you move into. And so I believe that everyone's got a shadow self, I believe that everyone's got a hero self. I talked about that a little bit earlier, you've got a dark side version of you, you've got a light side version of you, you've got a work mode, you've got a dad mode. And so all of this exists inside of yourself. You just haven't found a way to tap into that and really start to exert it. And so what will happen is that when you are really in rhythm, when you're really in pocket, when you're working out really consistently, or when you've got a ton of momentum, you'll find yourself exerting a lot more of that light side. And this is a battle that happens every single day. That's why I love the concept of like the arena and every single day you're, you're fighting the dark side version of yourself. Sometimes the dark side version wins. You never get rid of it. you never overcome completely and get rid of stress. You never get rid of self-doubt. You never get rid of, you know, negative emotions that are how humans are wired, but you can exert this alter ego to continually win that battle more and more. And the more you win, the bigger this gets, the smaller the dark side gets. But a lot of you have this flipped. You're in your non-hero state where you are sitting on the couch every single day, ordering DoorDash, playing out video games for six hours, telling yourself, oh, I really want a family, or I really want to be a good example for my kids, or I really want to have apps, or I really want to build more muscle. And you have all these things you say you want, you have all these wishes, but you never take action to do them. And you're losing over and over to this dark side version of yourself that ultimately is going to destroy you and destroy the life that you want to live if you don't go and make a change. And so you've got to start winning these little battles for your light side, for the hero inside of you, for your alter ego, so that you can start to build momentum, so that you can start to make this shift. I want to get to specifically how this addresses your habits, because I think this is a really powerful way to even look at language. You might tell yourself, I'm a failure. Your whole entire life, you're told you're, you're always going to be a failure. Maybe that would, you had someone in your family or someone growing up as a bully that said, hey, you're a failure. And so what you, what you end up doing is that you act as a failure. Your focus determines your reality. You might walk around every single day. Oh, I'm depressed. I'm depressed. I'm depressed. 
this isn't to say depression isn't real. It's something that a number of family members, friends have experienced at a really severe level. I've experienced it. But if you tell yourself something, you're going to go and act like that more and more. I would tell myself, oh, I'm depressed. Next thing I know, I'm like, what does a depressed person do? Oh, I'm going to start acting that way. I'm not a morning person. All right. You're going to struggle waking up if you tell yourself you're not a morning person. <laughs> I can guarantee you that I am worthless. I'm going to, you're going to end up acting unworthy. And uh, one that I've really struggled with in the past is feeling inadequate. I'm not good enough. Well, my mind's going to go and look for all the different areas where I can compare myself to where I'm not good enough. And it's because I'm telling myself that over and over and over. This is where language and I am statements are super powerful. Uh, we'll use Return of the Jedi. It's one of my favorite examples on the flip side. Luke says, I am a Jedi like my father before me. And that leads to him taking the action of resisting the temptation of the dark side. But what he's really doing there is laying his foot in the ground and saying, this is my identity. This is who I am. Then you've got the next one. Um, I'm the best dad in the world. If you truly believe you're the best dad in the world, you're going to start shifting your habits and actions to be a better father. Just going to happen. Um, I am a member of Delta Squad. This is one that is really fun uh, for the people inside of the community that I run, where essentially, as soon as they become a member of this elite squad uh, in the Star Wars universe, they're like, man, I've got to hold up my end of the bargain. I got to make sure that I'm doing my part to not let my, my troops down, to not let the other members down, to not let my team down. And giving yourself that little bit of a identity shift, or I would look at almost more as an identity to live up to, almost like having the name of a Hall of Fame player or a movie star. Like you've got to kind of live up to that name. And so when you're part of a gamified system, you're going to want to live up to, oh, I got to act how that group, that community acts. Otherwise, I'm going to be cast out of the community. And so wrapping up this video, uh, I got another video down below in the description, three ways to gamify your fitness. And this goes into like step-by-step -step ways on how you can gamify your fitness to make it more engaging. And so if you've got value out of this video or any questions, drop them down below in the comments, hit that subscribe button. If you want to get more videos kind of in the blend between personal development, fitness, Star Wars, Star Wars for me is just a really cool way to look at the mythological blueprint of characters and how those characters exhibit traits and how we can really align ourselves with those characters just like we do in greek mythology or norse mythology i think it's a really similar way to look at oh you know this is a story that is being told how can i use the lessons in this story to apply them to my life so uh i'll wrap the video up questions down below thanks for watching catch you guys in the next trooper transmission